Hello there and welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software, where I talk about game development using Unity and occasionally digital art. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Today I wanted to respond to a question that someone posted on my YouTube page. So not too long ago I posted a video about how to do object pooling in Unity. And in that video I used my own homegrown object pooling manager. And this particular user um, pushed the button, uh, made this comment on my channel. He said, this is not using UnityEngine.pool. How come? Now, what he's asking is, why am I not using the built-in object pooler that's provided with Unity? And I did respond to his question here, but I thought that was a good question and that it really warranted more of an explanation as to why I'm using my own home-brewed uh, object pooling manager instead of what's built in with Unity. And so I wanted to address that in this video. And I'm gonna start by talking about how the built-in object pooling in Unity works. So the way it works in Unity, is actually just the standard c .net object pool. And it requires you to specify the type of object that you wanna pool. So in this example here, they're creating a pool of particle systems. And so they instantiate here, new object pool, particle system and the constructor takes a few parameters it takes some um, callback functions and then some other parameters for managing the pool and if you look at this create pooled item called back function that it's got here this is what gets called when you call the dot get method on your object pool and what it does is it creates a game object of type particle system adds a component particle system to it and as you can see, it's very specific to a particle system. This pool will only work with particle systems. Now, if you remember in my tutorial um, for my object pool example, I have a spawner class here that has a collection of templates, um, prefabs actually. So if you go in and look at the spawner script and go to the top of the script, you'll see I've got this list of game objects that I'm calling prefabs. Okay, so in the editor, I'm just assigning four different types of game objects to that collection of game objects, which are the prefabs that I'm gonna spawn with my spawner. And so I have a little function here, spawn random object, and this is called repeatedly from the on enable method um, every 0.1 seconds and I'm grabbing a random game object from that collection of prefabs, and I'm calling spawn game object using that prefab. And so if you wanna see that, <clears throat> excuse me, if you wanna see that in action, I will click play. And you can see it's spawning every 10th of a second, a random game object from this collection. So if I wanted to use the built-in object pooler that Unity provides, um, I would have to create a pool for every type of prefab that I want to create. Um, so for instance, I could have var pool equals new object pool game object. And then in my parameters here, I could have create ball object, for instance, and then that, that thing could create a ball prefab. Um, so hopefully you can see how, what a management nightmare that would be for every single type of prefab that I want to spawn, I would have to create a separate pool just for that prefab type. And then if I ever created a new prefab, I'd have to create a new pool just for that prefab type. And my manager would have to look up based on the name of the prefab, which object pool to give you. So mine can be consumed perfectly generically, totally agnostic of the underlying type of game object this might be. So I wanted to demonstrate how easy this would be to implement in your own game. And by the way, if you think I'm off base about this, um, I actually, when I first started looking at the built-in Unity object pooling, thought maybe I'm missing something. Maybe this isn't 
uh, as difficult as I thought to work with prefabs. And so I actually went up to the Unity forum and I posted a question about it. And I explained how I use prefabs with my object pool and explained the difficulty that I was running into trying to use the built-in object pooler just in case I missed something and there was something obvious I was overlooking. And the official answer from Unity is that their pool system is not written for game objects and prefabs and that for my use case, he would stick to what I already have. So it does say that there is a way you could use it with prefabs. However, it requires an exact type. So hopefully that answers the question as to why I came up with my own object pooling manager and shared it with the community. But to show you just how easy it would be to use, I'm gonna take you to my 3D Space Shooter tutorial. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been doing a tutorial series on how to create a 3D Space Shooter in Unity. So in this, I've got an escort fighter here that has a pair of blasters, and the blaster shoots a projectile. And if we go and look at the um, script for that blaster, you'll see that it takes a serialized field for a projectile prefab. Now in this case, I know it's gonna be a projectile. This is a base class that I'm gonna derive from for every type of projectile I might have. Um, and I can show you if we go back into the editor that um, in this case, I'm using a player projectile. But the point being, this guy doesn't really care what kind of projectile this prefab is. In fact, this could just as easily be a game object and it would work just as well. Now, I'm not using object pooling here. I'm only instantiating this. And then if we go and look at the definition for a projectile, you can see that after it runs out of fuel, I destroy it. So I'm instantiating and destroying these projectiles, which as you know, is not very performant if you have lots of these things being instantiated and destroyed because the garbage collector's got to go and clean them up. So if I wanted to use my object pool manager in this game, how would I do that? Well, one thing that I've done is I've taken my object pool manager and I've extracted it to a package and I've actually submitted this to the Unity Asset Store and it's under evaluation now uh, in the approval process. So hopefully it'll be approved sometime soon and it will be available on the Asset Store. In the meantime, you can use the GitHub link that I'm putting in the description of the video to grab this package and import it into your game. And so the way you can do that is assuming you've downloaded it from GitHub, you just say Assets import package, custom package. And I've already browsed to my object pool example where I've got this Unity package here. And if I open that, you'll get the import dialog. And you can see that it has a demo scene, which is essentially this scene right here that I have in my demo um, that shows how to use the object pooler. We don't need that for my game, so I'm gonna uncheck that but we do want everything else. Uh, we probably don't need the user's guide, it's a PDF file, but I'll go ahead and leave that checked. So just to look at what's in this package, we have the actual object pool manager itself, which is a prefab and it's got this script associated with it. And I have some helper functions. Now one script in particular, this load persistent object script is attached to this manager's prefab and it's under a resources folder. So if you include this, when you do your import, then what's gonna happen is as soon as you run your game, by virtue of that script that has that um, runtime load attribute, it will automatically load my manager's prefab from your resource folder, and that has attached to it an object pool manager. So let's go look at that script real quick, load persistent objects. It's got this runtime initialize on load method. It's set to load before the scene loads. As soon as this executes, it will grab that manager's prefab from the resources folder, instantiate it and call don't destroy on load on it. So what that means is, as soon as I run the game, let's go out here where we can see my hierarchy. I'll collapse this. You'll see appearing here in the hierarchy, a don't destroy on load node. And underneath of that, is our object pooler. Of course, I got to turn off maximize so we can still see this. And there's our don't destroy unload. And underneath of that, you can see 
we've got my managers. Seems like it's loaded two of them. Oh, I already have one in my game. So it did create another one of those and it's got an object pool manager. Now, if I didn't want that, I could just remove that um, and then I could just add the prefab for the object pool manager to my managers class here and that would work just as well. So if I wanna use that object pool manager, there's one other thing I have to do. If you've been following my series on the 3D space shooter, you'll know that in my scripts folder, I added an assembly definition. And I'm currently only pulling in a reference to the detonator package that we had downloaded. If I was to try and say I go into my blaster script here, if I was to try and instead of calling instantiate, call object pool manager, it's not gonna be able to find the object pool manager in my project. And so in order to make that work, it's really simple. I just go into my object pool manager into the scripts folder and I create an assembly definition and I will call this midnight oil software. And if you're not using an assembly definition in your game, you won't have to do this step. This is just because I'm using them in my game to kind of segregate things. Uh, if I go back into my scripts folder, select the assembly definition, and then under references, click the plus sign and select Midnight Oil Software, apply, go back into our blaster script. Now, if I say object pool manager, you see it finds it, spawn game object, and we'll use our projectile prefab dot game object. We'll use the same parameters, muzzle dot position, transform dot rotation. That will spawn this projectile, and if it's already got one in the pool, it will use it. Now we also need to go into our projectile and where we would destroy it, instead of destroying it, we can say object pool manager dot despawn game object, game object. Oh, and before I do that, I wanna show you what it looks like without this change. So let's go back into our game. We're gonna hit play. And you'll see the don't destroy on load created here. And you see there's our manager's clone with the object pool manager. Now, if I come in here and start shooting, you see that because I'm not using the object pooler for those, it's creating and destroying game objects. And they're just being added to the regular hierarchy and destroyed. They're not under don't destroy on load. All right, so let's go back into our script and remove those comments. Go back into the projectile, remove those comments. And let's do this again. All right, if I come in here and start shooting, you see that those projectiles were created under don't destroy on load and they're not being destroyed. They're just being deactivated and reused. All right. So one thing I do want to point out about the way that my object pool manager works is under the covers, I am using a dictionary that maps the prefab name to a queue of game objects, but I'm only storing these game objects in a pool when they're deactivated. So when you despawn a game object, we deactivate it and we get the pool for it and we enqueue it into the pool. 
So what this means is, unlike the built-in object pooling that Unity provides and the way many other people implement object pooling, I'm not tracking active game objects in my pool. So when I go to spawn a new object, I don't have to search through all the active ones to find an inactive one that I can give you to reuse. When you spawn a new object, or when you grab one from the pool, it's removed from the pool and activated. And then when you deactivate it, it's added back to a pool. So that makes spawning new ones from the pool even faster than the implementation that would be provided by Unity. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that helped explain why I would write my own object pool manager and why you might want to use it and just how easy it is to plug it into your application. And if you did find it helpful, do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button. It really does help me to grow my channel. And I want to get this material in front of as many people as possible to help them out. So if you did find it useful and you liked it, not only click like and subscribe, but give me a comment. And you have any questions or anything, any suggestions, I'd appreciate hearing from you. Um, I appreciate the fact that that um, press the button dude um, asked that question on my channel and gave me this opportunity to respond. And so, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to hear what you find useful on my channel. And if there's any suggestions for things I can improve or any topics in particular you'd like to see me cover, please let me know. So once again, thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.